بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم I hope all of you will be fine I Izhar Ali Bangash will be discussing with you this topic it will be a sort of guidance for second year MBBA students we will not go into the details of this topic and they will also not be asked in your HOSPI exams in this guidance we will discuss the examination of speech of a person and then we will discuss the assessment of parietal temporal frontal and occipital lobe functions now first of all we will discuss speech assessment speech it is the ability to express your feelings and thoughts in clinical settings when we take history if there is any abnormality related to speech it is likely to become apparent now in OSPI exams speech assessment can be done by doing various tests first of all we will check free speech now this can be done by asking the subject to describe his job or his daily routine or the room then we will check comprehension now this can be done by asking the patient to do various tasks now first we will do this without eliciting language for example we will ask him to touch your chin then your nose and then your ear and then we will ask him various questions with yes or no answers for example do you put your shoes on before your socks now these questions should be asked in the language which subject knows then we will check repetition by asking the subject to repeat a phrase for example we will ask him to repeat this no ifs ands or buts in urdu we can ask him to say kacha papad pakka papad then we will ask him to name various objects pointed at and finally we will look for dysarthria now this can be done by asking him to repeat a phrase such as british constitution or in urdu we can ask him to say shahrai karakorum now we will discuss the various abnormalities related to speech first of all dysphasia dysphasia in general it is any abnormality of speech it has got various types first of all receptive dysphasia in this type the individual is unable to understand the spoken word or the written word the speech it is fluent but disorganized and the problem it lies in this area the vernix area and uh, receptive dysphasia it is also called as posterior dysphasia another type of dysphasia is expressive dysphasia this is also called as anterior dysphasia as the area involved is located anteriorly and that area is called as the broca's area now in this dysphasia the patient he is able to understand but unable to express and the speech in this case is non fluent 
in conductive dysphasia the patient is unable to repeat a phrase and the problem it may be lying in arcuate physiculus which connects Broca's area and Wernick's area. Another type is nominal dysphasia in which the patient is unable to name various objects. Yet another type is global dysphasia. In this case the patient he is unable to express as well as to comprehend speech. In this case the areas which are affected by a disease process they are the Broca's area and Wernick's area. Both these areas they are affected in global dysphasia. So, we have discussed receptive dysphasia, expressive dysphasia, conductive dysphasia, nominal dysphasia and global dysphasia. In speech assessment, it is important to note the presence of dysarthria. In dysarthria, the patient he is unable to repeat a phrase like British constitution or Shahrai Karakorum. It is also important to note the presence of dysphonia in speech assessment. Dysphonia it is the alteration of quality of voice. If a patient is having dysphasia or disorientation or his cognitive functions they are impaired, it is important to do assessment of various cortical lobes. First we will discuss the assessment of parietal lobe. The parietal lobe assessment it can be done in two steps. First we will discuss dominant lobe assessment. In dominant lobe assessment we will perform various tests. First we will look for the presence of a calculia in which the patient he will not be able to perform simple mathematical calculations. For example, if you ask him to take 2 from 100 and then 2 from the answer and so on, he will not be able to do so. Then we will look for the presence of a graphia in which the patient he will not be able to write. Then we will look for the presence of left right disorientation. In this case the patient he will not be able to show his right or left hand and similarly if you ask him to touch his left ear with his right hand he will not be able to do so. Then we will look for the presence of agnosia. Now agnosia it is the inability to understand the meaning of stimulations of different types. It can be tested by asking the patient to name his fingers. Inability to do so is called finger agnosia. In non-dominant lobe assessment, we will look for graph asthesia. It is the ability to recognize number or letter drawn on the skin. You can use a pointed object or pencil to draw a number on the skin as shown in the picture. Then we will look for tactile extinction which is the ability to feel a stimulus when it is applied to each side separately 
but not on one side when both sides are stimulated. You will ask the patient to close his eyes and then you will touch on one hand and then on the other and then on both together. Ask on which side the touch is felt. The normal response is both when stimulation is applied to each side. It is important that the hands be touched simultaneously. Now we will discuss general signs of parietal lobe dysfunction. First we will look for sensory and visual inattention. When one arm or leg is tested at a time sensation is normal but when both sides are tested simultaneously the sensation is appreciated only on the normal side. Then we will look for visual field defects. As we know that visual pathway it involves passage through parietal lobes as well. So it is important to look for visual field defects. Then we will look for astereognosis. It is the inability with eyes closed to recognize an object placed in the hand when the ordinary sensory modalities are intact. Then we will look for a grab asthesia we have already discussed. Then we will look for two point discrimination. In this case the testing involves the ability to distinguish a single point from two points close together. The minimal separation that can be distinguished is about 3 centimeters on the hand or foot and 0.6 centimeters on the fingertips. A compass can be used for this test. Ask the patient to shut the eyes and then say whether one or two points can be felt. Bring the compass points close together and test intermittently with just one point as shown in the picture. Then we will look for dressing and construction apraxia. Dressing apraxia is tested by asking the patient to take off his shirt and then turn it inside out and ask him to put it back on. Patient with a non-dominant parietal lobe lesion may find this impossible to do. Then check for construction apraxia. The construction apraxia it is tested by asking the patient to copy an object that you have drawn as shown in the picture. Finally, we will look for spatial neglect. In spatial neglect, one side stimuli, they are ignored by the brain. Now it is tested by asking the patient to let us suppose to copy a drawing that you have drawn as shown in the picture. Temporal lobe is concerned with short term and long term memory. The short term memory it can be tested by name, address and flower test. You will ask the patient to remember a name, address and the names of three flowers and repeat them immediately. Then ask the patient five minutes later to repeat the names again. Long term memory can be tested by asking the patient about any historical event. In frontal lobe assessment, we will perform various tests. 
first we will ask for any personality change. Frontal lobe lesions may cause changes in emotion, memory, judgment, carelessness about personal habits and disinhibition. Then we will look for the presence of primitive reflexes. Among them we will look for grasp reflex, palmo mental reflex and pout and snout reflex. In grasp reflex we will move our fingers across the palm of the patient's hand and he will grasp our fingers involuntarily if it is present. In palmo mental reflex there will be contraction of mentalis muscle when we stroke the thinner eminence firmly with a key. In pout and snout reflex by tapping with the tendon hammer over the upper lip it will induce pouting movements of the lips. Then we will check for interpretation of proverb. Now the patient with frontal lobe lesion he will not be able to interpret a proverb properly rather he will give concrete explanations of proverbs. Then we will look for loss of smell. Then we will check for gait apraxia. In this case there will be marked unsteadiness in walking. The feet they will behave as if glued to the floor causing a strange shuffling gait. In the end we will assess occipital lobe. As we know that visual cortex lies here so it is important to rule out any visual field defect and then we will look for alexia which is inability to read also called as word blindness. With this we come to the end of this guidance. I thank you all.